I'm Dr. Scott Augustine, and I want to welcome you to our laminar flow operating room ventilation laboratory. As you can see up on the ceiling here, we've got a huge laminar flow clamp. And just to demonstrate that the air is on and the laminar flow is flowing as it's supposed to, you can see the smoke is going downward, and that's the way it should always be in a laminar flow field. In addition, we've got kind of a normal size operating room here, maybe it's a little small, and a very standard surgical setup. The question that we're interested in is what happens to surgical smoke. Now, the smoke evacuators that have become popular are certainly a good thing to use, but research shows that they only take about 50% of the smoke away. So the question that we're going to answer today is what happens to the remaining 50%? The 50% that did not get taken away, is it disposed of safely? or not. And what we're going to show you, I think, will take your breath away. So what's so amazing about this is that the big difference between safety and not safety is what kind of a uh, surgical warming system you're using. We're going to start by showing you what happens when you use an air-free system that does not produce any waste heat. This is called hot up. And what effect does that have on the operating room ventilation? Now, we're going to turn the lights down a little bit because we're using theater smoke to simulate surgical smoke and it's just easier to see if the lights aren't on so bright. But here we are introducing some smoke. You can see it here and you can see how it just rolls off the table. The operating room ventilation, the laminar ventilation, puts it down quickly to the floor where it can go out the side vents and is completely safe. So the hot dog patient warming system is still on, but I'd like to change your view a little bit. Now you're looking down a plane of green laser light that you can see here. And that gives you a whole different perspective of what's happening to the smoke. Can you see it just riding low along the table and then getting brushed off to the side? So now we've switched to forced air warming, and that's the only switch that we make. You can see an upper body blanket there, standard forced air blower, and the setting is on high. That's the only switch that we made in this entire setup. And I'd like now to turn off the overhead lights again, and let's see what happens to the smoke when we introduce it. Now instead of going off the side of the table, you can see it rising, coming up under the light, and forming into a vortex. None of that should be happening. There should be no smoke that comes upward in a laminar flow system, but you can very clearly see a vortex forming under the light. And that vortex is just like a tornado. It can suck particles off the floor, or it can smoke, suck smoke off of the surgical field. But in any event, it keeps it airborne for up to 45 seconds after each use of the cautery. And who is standing here breathing that smoke that's airborne? The surgeon, the assistants, anyone else that's in the vicinity is standing in this smoke and breathing it for up to 45 seconds after each use of the cautery. So we still have the forced air system going, and we're just taking this from a different angle. You saw the green laser before, and now we're going to see what the smoke looks like looking down that green laser. You can see it forming into a vortex. You can see it circulating around, and you can see it staying airborne for a good long while. Once again, none of that smoke should be there. That is totally due to the forced air warming. Now, how does it get there? Well, the heat from the forced air is escaping. It goes up the back side of the drape, where you're standing right now, comes under the light, and because the, it's, once it gets under the light, that energy that's in that heat forms the vortex in conjunction with the laminar flow coming down on this side. So it's really the waste heat from forced air warming that allows that vortex to form and all of the bad things that happen because of it. I think it's safe to say that forced air warming puts everyone in the operating room at risk. The patient, yes, the surgeon, yes, the nurses, yes, the technicians, yes, and anesthesia, because anesthesia is standing next to that side of the drape, breathing it as it comes by. What did we just see? We watched the waste heat from forced air warming form a giant vortex that was sucking smoke off the surgical field and putting it into your breathing zone. And not only putting it into your breathing zone, but keeping it there for 45 seconds or more. Now research has shown that the average amount of smoke in an operating room is about the equivalent of 30 
cigarettes being smoked in a day. And let's say half of that gets taken away by the smoke evacuator, we still have 15 cigarettes left. Cigarettes have carcinogens in them, and surgical smoke has carcinogens as well. But one of the differences is that surgical smoke also has viable viruses. Now if that makes you nervous or perhaps even worried, I urge you to share this video with your operating room colleagues so that they, can, they too can be aware of this risk. I also urge you to consider switching to hot dog patient warming. It's air free, it's more effective than forced air, it's much cheaper than forced air, and it's quiet compared to forced air. But perhaps most importantly, it does not produce waste heat. So the ventilation system in the operating room can do what it's designed to do, and that is to safely take smoke and other particles push them to the floor and out the side vents. Thanks for watching.